one of the things that we started when I got on board is a lot of folks feel if you offer the service, people will come. Yeah. And the way the Village of Promise works and the way that uh, the Harlem Children's Zone work, works is it's not just waiting for people to come. Mm-hmm. You literally get up and go out into the community and you're knocking on doors, hmm. telling people what you do and encouraging them to join with you in changing the trajectory of their lives. And uh, our individual who's in charge of uh, family advancement, our director's name is Tashe Bikes. Mm -hmm. Uh, She and members of her staff went out and literally knocked on all 280 doors of uh, the units that are in the Northwoods community, (coughs) telling people what we do. And that was how we saw growth in things like uh, our uh, GED program. Yeah. Because people were like, well, we didn't know you guys did that. Mm-hmm. And we periodically do those door knocking campaigns and we get with uh, the residence council, go to all their meetings just to keep them apprised of the different things that the Village of Promise can do for the community. And that's a trust building factor. And that's so important when you're walking alongside people, you know, that. They're taking the hard steps and moving forward, and you have to trust mm-hmm. somebody. And we just get to, I mean, we have the honor of walking alongside them every day. You know, and it's like I tell folks, my story is their story. I grew up, I started off in one of these housing project units uh, when I was a young kid in New Purdue, Virginia. Mm-hmm. And, you know, somebody came in my father's life, put him in a position where he had the ability to save up enough money so that he could then go and buy his first home. But I know that journey. My grandparents lived in subsidized housing Mm. and I would go and spend the uh, nights with them over the course of, you know, my young life. And it's not what people think it is. I mean, they're every day, normal people like you and I, Mm. and it's, they just, for some reason have fallen on bad fortune and what they need is an opportunity and a chance to be able to change that trajectory. Yeah, you stole my question. I was getting my next set of questions was like, how do people find out? Because that's always like the toughest thing, right? If a lot of these nonprofits is how does someone know that they can contact Thrive in order to get health care if they don't have health care? There's 92,000 people who don't have health care right. in Huntsville. Um, so that's awesome. It's almost like the missionary work in a way, right? Knocking doors and, yeah. and saying, hey, are, did you know about this? Right. Or a, a good form of loitering. You know, I mean, soliciting, you know, not really, loitering, soliciting. Yeah. That's, soliciting. <laughs> that's <laughs> loitering and soliciting, right? We're going to hang outside your door until <laughs> the answer. But I mean, that's how you build trust with organizations. Mm-hmm. And I think that is another part of the secret sauce of what we do. Yeah. And it's also the partnerships that we build. You know, we've got a partnership with Thrive Alabama, and they come in and talk to our families and family connections so that we can now help them build relationships with a medical provider so that their first uh, medical intervention doesn't always take place at, you know, the emergency room. Yeah. So between partnerships and literally word of mouth knocking on doors and, you know, every uh, month showing up at the residence council's meetings to let them know we are going to be here. And we're your advocate, your voice, and we want to do what we can to help change the trajectory of your life, to transform lives. Mm -hmm. And speaking about healthcare, you know, um, we had a program that kicked off in January of this year that was the health services program, and that's just an incredible resource. Dana it spoke to people trying to go, you know, going to the emergency room as the first line of care and different, oh, yeah. you know, and things like that. Dana, do you want to talk about health care? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> our partnerships with things like Heels Incorporated. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, our kids really didn't have a school nurse in our preschool. You know, before uh, we started this partnership with Heels. Uh, teachers would see some kid. Uh, I see a kid with spots. I'm taking photographs. Does anybody know what this <laughs> li- is? Google it. <laughs> and, you know, now we, uh, through the partnership with Heels, uh, we were able to get uh, a school nurse in two days a week. And we also have access on the off days because the school nurse is one that also works over at, uh, I always forget the uh, elementary school uh, that mm-hmm. our kids feed into. But we're sharing those resources. Uh, we're also associated with... Uh, Wellstone, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, they're providing mental health services to our kids, and this is because of a partnership and grants uh, that we were provided from the Community Foundation. Uh, they saw a need there, mm-hmm. and we partnered with Heels and Wellstone to provide those services, uh, not only to the kids in our schools, but to their families. Post-pandemic, 
kids that were under-resourced probably got hit harder from mm-hmm. a mental health standpoint than any other group in the country. Yeah. So this is a real game changer. Mm-hmm. And that's what, you know, Dana said, the, the Community Foundation and Compass Society helped us launch that program. And then this year, Huntsville Hospital and the Community Health Initiative stepped right in to continue that funding. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Tremendous community. And Dana has a lot of dreams for mental health and what that's going to look like within Village of Promise. So. Do you? <laughs> yeah, it's just sure. we want to try to make sure that it's not just uh, ending those services when the kids leave the school, mm-hmm. but also making sure that those services go into the community that we're serving. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Huntsville Housing Authority uh, has been working very closely with HEALS as well. So during vacation periods, uh, HEALS' brand-new mobile unit goes out to the communities all over the city uh, because kids might not have those services during school break. Mm -hmm. So now we're taking those services into the communities so the kids maintain access, but also now the parents get that same access. Yeah. So it's just trying to make sure that we can grow that program and once again still working with groups like Heels and with Thrive Alabama, Mm -hmm. with Wellstone, making sure that families have continued health care and continued uh, health maintenance so we don't get to the emergency room as the first stop because we don't have any sort of a relationship with a health care provider. Yeah.